Hello, lovely humans. I'm Wildly, and you are listening to Sex Stories, a podcast where we talk about sex so that we can make the world a sexier, more loving place together. And today is a very, very special episode. Can I tell them that you're from my childhood? From my literal childhood? Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Also, my first ever girl crush. <laughs> Our guest is a 34-year-old queer cis woman living in Los Angeles. She is pansexual, poly, and currently has two partners. One, a cis straight man. The other, a queer non-binary person. She is an exhibitionist kinky sub who enjoys sex clubs and consensual ravagement. She explores her sexuality in practice and through her art with collage and film work. And she is also a fourth time producer and curator of failed films, an adult film and art festival. Welcome, Lauren West. Hi, it's so nice to see you again. It is so exciting for me to have you here right now. Let's see, where should, where should we start? Should we tell them a little bit? Like, can, should we say that you had a threesome with me and my <laughs> former master? Yeah, hell, uh, absolutely, 100%. We ran into each other in Colombia. I mean, like, yes, like yes. I saw that on Facebook that you were there, and I was like, mm-hmm. I'm in Bogota. And then we mm-hmm. ended up traveling around and, like, was, and like making out and having some of, like, the best experiences of my life. Like, I never, like, traveled with someone like that before. And yeah, also, like, yeah. we also, like, ran into each other at poetry events and you did make a film for failed films which oh was my God. like amazing yeah. um lauren is literally the muse behind <laughs> art is my mistress <laughs> and when i made that i was like i'm just gonna make one short film a month and i haven't made anything since other than making a podcast every week which is huge which is a lot Very which, is, which huge. takes up my bandwidth you know plus yeah. all the stuff on instagram that is now taken down and so i also i think i've told this story on pod i remember being in eighth grade and being in our English class and like I was like going to get a book from the library and I remember you being like, Karin, you're pretty. You're so pretty. Like and I was you wearing are my... so pretty and we're so pretty and but, continue to be but I just, so like, beautiful. I had never been complimented like that by a girl. And I also was just like, she's the hot shit. Like, that's like the, you know, because like my, oh my perception goodness. of you was like, that's the pretty brunette one in our grade, you know? Like, yeah. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> and, and like I also didn't even identify that as a crush until decades like a year and a half or ten maybe yeah, a decade no. and a half later I don't know like so isn't um, that so funny I feel like so they, my entire like youth was just like making out with all my girlfriends and like yet I didn't yeah. even think that I was queer yeah. until I was like in my mid-20s or something I was Same. like wait Same. I've had like so many threesomes I'm like all I want to do is like go down on women like Oh, oh, oh. Oh, this is what it is. Oh. Yeah, I was like, well, everyone thinks girls are pretty, right? Yeah, exactly. And, and like somebody said this the other day. They were like, oh, well, you know, it was the like I kissed a girl era, the like Katy Perry song or whatever. And I yeah. was like, yeah, I guess. But I was like, and maybe it was just that for everybody. But I was going through my friend's like old college like photo albums and I'm li- to really just make out queen in every single photo with every single person. And I'm like, okay, yeah, pansexual makes sense yes. to me. Thank Dude, you, 30s. It's, a- it's so nice. Damn, we've had some good times. I know. Wow. What, we were like maybe 12 or something when we met. Yeah. Yeah. Middle school. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's a crazy <laughs> time. Okay. And look so how far and beautiful we've come. Look how far and beautiful we've come. <laughs> oh, also, I was in one of your films. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And you were being very hot. What did we do? We went to the beach. We did. Boots. Yes. Yes. It was for my directorial debut for filmmaking. And it was for my film, The Empress, which was like a depiction of like my journey and sexuality using tarot cards as like the, you know, catalyst or like the visual representation. And so... We did the two of swords together, which (laughs) had me, you know, naked with the swords on the beach. And then you in this super hot, like, dom outfit, like, whipping me from behind. (laughs) Like, there's this beautiful moment where, like, it's kind of in slow-mo or whatever, and the waves just, like, crash up, and every time I show somebody that film, they're like, oh, that's such a cool moment. Oh, yeah. my God, I fucking love that. Yeah. Oh, so fun. Okay, so let's dive into your story. This is sure. literally such a treat for me because I think I've only interviewed one of my lovers. Really? Yeah. Oh, and, wow. I'm and honored. It's so exciting because I'm like, oh, there's so many details I don't know. So 
Would you start off by telling our sweet listeners if you had to rate yourself on a sexual shame a with 10 being the most full of shame and one being not so shamey at all, where do you fall like right now today? And like, what's the arc of roller coaster been like over the years? Oh my God. Yeah. I was saying to you off mic earlier, like right now I'm just like, I'm giddy. I'm excited to like talk to you and get into this. So my shame a has gone down. I'd say like for me, like a two or a three, possibly mm-hmm. closer to two. I'm not sure. Um, it doesn't have to be precise. I know, precise. I'm like, it's how do I measure this? this? We do. How do I, I'm like, I don't know. But how does it oscillate? Like, yeah, this morning I was like out of 10 thinking about like certain stories and like things that I might share and be embarrassed about. And then like, no, hell yeah, these stories are amazing. Like I'm at a zero. And so, gosh, I mean, the journey throughout my life like I think you know starting out as I think a lot of women people raised as women like do like carrying like a lot of shame for like most of our adolescence (laughs) and thankfully these days I'm really grateful for like my evolution and where I'm at now and like that you know has certainly not dissipated away completely but like better to like analyze it and I guess deconstruct and see you know kind of shake those things off well and you were making me feel better by saying that also you have like almost zero shame when it's a work context but then with partners sometimes it spikes up still yeah no totally and I think I was mentioning to you I think HSV conversations that you have with new partners I think that's one of those oh gosh I do have like the shame the huge shame stigma that so many people like do have that is also so sadly and unnecessary (laughs) you know but like because we've been brought up with that like I think with intimate partners that that's the main thing I think that I mainly get like nervous about but in a work setting yeah Yeah. I'm like oh gosh ask me I'll tell you anything (laughs) you know yeah yeah. well actually let's go out of order and talk about health and safety for a Mm -hmm. second have you ever had a bad experience when you've told someone about HSV so just to remind everyone oh I have herpes (laughs) in my throat I have HSV too and one orally. And every time I tell a doctor that I have HSV2 in my throat, they're like, what? How is that possible? And I'm huh. like, yeah, uh, deep throating. I don't know. Like, <laughs> What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, what's your experience been like so far telling partners or has it, like, has there been a negative backlash? I think that was like the entire issue because when I very first found out Yeah, like the three people in a row that I'm told I had like such crazy negative reactions, like no shade or whatever. But my like, you know, partner at the time got like really flustered about it and then like immediately told like all his best friends. And I was like, that's not your story to tell right now. I'm still figuring it out. That's one situation. The other situation, I was dating this woman and I told, you know, her right away and she literally fainted. (laughs) No. Yes. And I mean, but that's okay. To be fair, there's like, there was a, there's a medical condition involved in there. Like the, I forget the name. I think it's like vessel vagal or whatever, where like you do have strong reactions to, I think, medical yeah, things. But, but poor you. I know, but like, yes. And then the like third person, this just person I was like hooking up with at the time, like was like, because I was giving the whole spiel, like, I'm like, you know, it's not a big deal, but I just, you know, I, we didn't hook up this like last time because I wasn't sure how to tell him at the time. And then, yeah, he was like, well, I don't, you know, want that. And just never spoke to me again. So like the yeah. first like three, and so I, I got this like big, you know. That sucks. Cause that's three big yucks in a row, which like I have personally never gotten and your poor nervous system Damn. yeah no I mean thank god <laughs> like talking with I mean I have like this incredible group of sex positive queer sex worky friends and everyone like that I was surrounded by was like oh my god like so do we so do we so that, do we okay, so, so do we that's like, what I wanted to tell about this story because yeah. when I had it I was in my deep 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 shame moment yeah at failed films when, when I was premiering yeah and, yeah and I walked in and I was like I have herpes mm. and you were like don't we all? Like, who doesn't? You're like, yeah, you were like, you're like, yeah, you know, and you and you told me about it, and I just immediately was like, oh, well, now we don't have to worry if we hook up, you know, yeah, like, and, and yeah, it's totally. like that's the other thing. It was like a lot of people have it, and so so uh, many people. Damn. So, have you had any good experiences? Yeah, I mean, oh, I also just wanted to say, oh, just like based on those experiences too, like the negative ones, I have found myself and thankfully did this you know for you and I hope you had many other experiences like that but yeah for the people I know that like 
find out like after me or whatever. Like I hope to always just be that person to like be like, you're good, it's girl, fine. guy, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Like person, like you're good. So many people have it. So many people don't know they do. And just like, it's hard. It's a hard, you know, like thing to navigate. But like, I feel like the majority of people, if you do <laughs> have some version, I isn't mean, it? Isn't the, the oh, statistic uh, anyway? 80% like 80%. of people have HSV-1. Yeah. And to be really clear, it's not oral or genital. It's like where you have it. HSV-1 can be in your pussy or on your cock or in your asshole. Like they can yeah, go yeah. different places. Yes, HSV-2 is not genital herpes, but it can live in your throat. You know, yeah, it, is, yeah, yeah. it is supposed to be really hard to get in your throat. So, okay, I'm a champion, you know? Champion. <laughs> yes, <a> special subject. <laughs> Look at me. Yeah. How do health and safety conversations go for you now? Are you feeling more comfortable or is that something you want to like noodle out? Like, Yeah, I feel like it's, you know, now I, you know, I'm in these two partnered like poly relationships and I guess I just like haven't had to have that many conversations like as of late because like I feel like slightly like polysaturated. So it's not like I am going out like on dates all the time or like having to have that conversation. And a lot of the people I like, still hook up with or people that I know already have it or I've already had that conversation with. But like, yeah, I feel like if that dynamic changed, it would be, yeah, something I'd have to figure out and like get more comfortable with, certainly. Do you want to hear how I do it? Yes, absolutely. And if I, this is a repeat for you guys, sorry, or probably I'm going to tell it different. I don't know. I've been taking the route when I have a new lover, especially if it's in a situation where like we're having an emotional connection or like maybe getting a little deeper I let my partners know I am also on suppressive therapy. Mm-hmm. And it's also been, I think, more than two years. So at that point, it's like a less than 4% of the time that you would even have to worry about any viral shedding that's mm-hmm. asymptomatic. So like, that's mm-hmm. the biggest concern. It's like, I'm able to be like, hey, like, do you get tested regularly? What's your health and safety status like? Like, have you had a clear test in the last month or so? You mm-hmm. know, and I kind of see what their answer is or if they're comfortable around that. And then sometimes if I remember, if I remember all the order of stuff, I'll be like, <laughs> do you get cold sores? Oh, yeah. But. And and they'll be like, yes. Or, you know, some people are like, no, never had one. I'm like, okay, okay. I want to make sure you don't get one. If, mm, if they've mm-hmm. never had one, I'm yeah. like, oh, that's awesome. I was like, okay, so you know about like herpes. So I have just, you know, I have like two kinds in my mouth, and my throat. I'm not having an outbreak right now. Here's the suppressive therapies mm-hmm. I take. And here's what I like to do to stay safe. How does that work for you? Do you think we need to do anything else? Because I had a person who wasn't fully honest with me, even though we had clear agreements about using barriers with other people and talking to people if we had partners in between. And even though we used protection for all the down there things, I thought that going down on this person because we'd had such extensive conversations was going to be okay. But it wasn't. So I want to make sure you are safe. You know, and so I really position it as like, someone fucked me over. It's okay. They're not a bad person. But I want to make sure that you're genitals never hurt the way my throat hurt because it was one of the most painful things I've ever experienced and he didn't tell me so I thought I had bad strep throat and then it was like two weeks later that I was like this is not okay like I was at like a level nine pain I couldn't think straight and so and I was traveling so I was like in Colorado like I was visiting a friend and like (sighs) And it was a whole thing, you know, and then he finally called me and I was like, oh, no, you know. Okay, so did he not know at the time or? He he had unprotected sex with someone the day before me Uh at a party. And then he thought because he had an open sore, but he was like icing his dick. And then he like finally went to the doctor and they swabbed the sore. Yeah. And then, but it had been also going on for a minute. And then they also did a blood test. So his blood test came back negative because he hadn't had the virus in his system. You need Mm -hmm. like four to six months for it to show up on a blood test. Also, they typically only always like swab. Mm -hmm. Like typically blood tests can be really irregular Yeah, and for for herpes, it's also like right away it doesn't help. But sometimes swab tests can come back negative if you don't swab it when it's at the right point in time. So he (laughs) he thought I had given it to him and the girl from the party even though I fucked him after that. And I was like, wait, 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 so you think, like, there was, like, a whole, like, time and logic yeah. misstep there. I also think it's interesting, though, too, because sometimes, because it can lay, like, dormant for so long mm-hmm. as well. Yeah, so, for some like, people. I, I mean, it's interesting to me that you even, like, know who gave it well, to you. Well, he I and she had not. outbreaks at the same the time. time. And like, so I was okay, like, that makes sense. Yeah. I was like, and what date did you start? Oh, okay, like, so, like, a few days before mine? Interesting, you know? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. No, that, no um, it's just interesting in that way because, yeah, I've seen it, like, manifest, like, not even with myself necessarily, but just, like, months later or like but then also like if they you know didn't know and then had sex with a partner and then the person gets it right away and I'm like oh interesting like for me I'm like I have 
no, no idea. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. And I don't think I would have even known because my experience was like I ended up getting a UTI <laughs> from using toys that probably were not properly washed, just to be honest. At that point, like, I was like, but this feels a little bit different. And like, but it, I, I never have experienced personally, I know it's different for everybody, but like a really bad breakout. Like, right. I just, I just haven't, you know? Great. And then I was like, this kind of looks different, you know? I was like looking down there and like, yeah. and then I got swabbed and it was positive. And I was like, wow, I literally would have never known if I ha- wasn't like so invested in like the UTI and just inspecting and all that. Yeah. Have you had any breakouts since? So... Mm. <laughs> I'm like, good question. It's like, I, because I feel like they're so mild. I, I yeah. like, yeah, I think once or twice and I've taken the suppressants, yeah, yeah. but it hasn't, again, it hasn't like manifested in a way where I'm like. See, herpes weird. is fucking fine. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. And I mean, it's different for everybody. And like, yes, when you said you have like level nine, like that's, that's hot. Unt- you know, like, untreated also in my throat, you know, but yeah. it's like. Yes, it's very, very mean the first time and very painful. I'm also hypersensitive, and that's why I pretty much stopped eating sugar because that's the most likely thing that'll make it flare up. I only almost had flare-ups both times I got COVID last July and the July before. That makes sense because you're, like, super, like, immune system Like, whatever at the time. So, yeah, that makes total sense. But, yeah, it's a... Damn. It's a wild world out there. Okay, well, I, I love this. We're off to a shame-smashing start. Yeah, totally. Um, will you give us a little overview of what your sex life is like right now and favorite parts? My sex life is great. <laughs> it's really great right now. Like One of my partners and I are like very, very uh, sexually compatible in terms of like our kinks, which has just been amazing. Yeah. yeah, I mean, my sex life is like pretty consistent. I mean, first of all, my Hitachi like never ever leaves my bedside. So like it is fully part of my morning routine. That's just like my self-sexual care like I literally I wake up in the morning I clean up and then I shower masturbate put on clothes go about my day so a I take (laughs) care of myself in that way and then with one of my partners yeah we're like very sexually active I I mean we basically like live together we spend most nights together so I'd say I mean maybe like three to I mean depending on how frisky like five times a week or something like that but yeah I mean I think too I've been with my partners like 12 and four years so I think that those um I know it's wild (laughs) I think just like your you know sexual proclivities and like ebbs and flows and relationships like that like change so like of course there's like you maybe get like used to like sleeping or together like in one bed all the time or whatever yeah and I'm like, we need to get back to the sex club. Like, let's yeah. go fuck in the park. <laughs> like, Damn. you know, um, Real all these sex like, stories in the things. park. Let's bring in some toys, and we do. And I'm like, I'm like, what? I don't. I have nothing. I, really, I have nothing to complain about. I'm, amazing. Yeah, it's, that's great. Oh my god, that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> what would you say is sexy to you? I was thinking about this like before going through your questions and I was like, what is sexy to me? Like, this is so interesting. And again, like being like pansexual, I feel like it can be like so many different things. Agree. You know? I do. Yeah. I like, I put it in my notes. Like I was like, it's like a certain je ne sais quoi. <laughs> you know, it's like this indescribable, I guess, vibe. I guess I really do like when people are like vulnerable or just share like deeper stories about themselves I find that really like sexy to me there's like some level of like confidence and quirkiness and just like they're everyone's like individual like essence and it's not, obviously it's not like everyone although to be fair I do kind of fall in love with everyone I get for, like it. a lot 10 seconds at the very arousal. least yeah. you know yeah, <laughs> like, I do and then like the crushes and the people that stick I think just have some I think some sort of like off kilter, sweet, confident essence. I, I don't know I how to describe it. I love that. Yeah. Okay, so when do you feel sexiest? When do I feel sexiest? So I put in my bio <laughs> my like exhibitionist, like obviously consensual proclivities. I really like being like watched or like recorded or like I guess cammed or being in the clubs, like being in front of people. I mean, that's I think maybe my kinkiest sexiest but on like a day to 
day basis. Wait, well, don't go skip past that. I want to oh, hear oh, more yeah, about. Ta- yeah, let's do because let's do I'm it. trying to figure out if I'm even an exhibitionist okay. or if I just don't mind if people are looking. So, do you have a feeling of like? La, come here, look at me, look at me. Like, is there a receiving quality to exhibitionism that you get off on? Or is it just like knowing they're there or something else? Oh, I mean, I think it's both of those things. I think it is receiving. I'm like, yeah, I want you to see me looking so hot. I want you to see me get fucked, you know? Like, yeah, yeah, that gives me pleasure, like turns me on. I'm like, oh, in this way, like, oh, you know, you... (laughs) I love that. I'm like, you want this? I know that like, makes me feel like too something. Which, no, I whatever. actually am trying to like learn that because mine is more like, I'll ignore all like, of you. Is... I'm right here focused on this right now, you know, mm-hmm. and, I, and I do get turned on by like video and stuff later, but I don't know if that's the feeling of exhibitionism. And I think exhibitionism, like you said, in consensual places. Yeah. I love, because I love looking. Yeah. And so yeah. I love the idea that like my allowed eyeballs are going to turn someone on. But yeah. I don't know if I understand it from the other perspective. So I'm just like curious what it feels like inside of you. <laughs> yeah. So so you don't feel like in the moment are you you're you're saying that you're just like focused on whoever you're like playing I, with I at the time and so you don't like It might quite... be related to like narratives from my family of origin that are like, oh, we're not flashy or like, oh, we're not you know, like it might mm-hmm. also be like a pushing away of attention. However, if I know that person likes watching and I feel permission to enjoy them enjoying, then it's almost like dual if that makes sense totally and i mean i think that is a lot of like what happens in like play spaces right okay. i mean i think i mean and i i think even you I've have more to, experience okay with no that i've than been I do. to play spaces and i have never truly felt successful in a play space i've Why never not? fucked in a play space <laughs> and okay. then it is and i am measuring success here by yeah which not. is not necessary um, and then you know like to your question or that i read like so what is fucking to you then like for me it classically has been penetration if it's in terms of fucking and then like now when i interview sex workers who have to be like clear about which acts are which or like porn people like are we Mm -hmm. fucking it means penetration sure so that's been classic for me but also like for me any sort of sex is like if we're agreeing it's sex or sexual, it's honestly not something I think about a whole lot unless the other person is like, I have these boundaries and it can't be sex. You know, I'm like, a blowjob is sex. Someone going down on me is sex. If yeah. we're touching genitals, it's sex. If you're licking my arm, I don't think that's sex unless that's getting you off. Like super and off, I right? know that it's an erotic something, something. Totally. You know, so I think it's like an energetic choice on some level like some agreement to get turned on together Mm -hmm. like i think there's got to be a consciousness to it for i don't think i can accidentally have sex (laughs) personally (laughs) for me for my definition um, I would hope not. I mean, I think you ever <laughs> accidentally. Well, I mean, of course, you know, if you fall into things, sure, I maybe that's have, accidentally. But, I may have told dominant partners that I accidentally came while fantasizing about them. But it's, I think it's much easier to accidentally have a fantasy pop into my head and then to get in trouble for not asking permission ahead of time. That makes mm. more sense to me. But actual sure. sex, I don't, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. So yeah. No, what's your answer for how do you count sex? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think... As you said, it's our narrative default, like what we're like we're raised with and like cis heteronormativity like these days. You know, I've had sex with all, you know, gender identities. And so like it doesn't have to be like a strap on or a penis, you know, to consider it sex. Oh, um, yeah. Fingers are definitely sex. Exactly. Right. Like, yeah, it's interesting. I think I do fall back onto that default when it's like a penis having person. Well, at least it says penis have, you know, yeah, yeah. says man. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, we had sex and that means like PIV. But um, actually, a lot of the sex I've been referring to lately, I have a partner that spanks me right now. Yeah. So a yeah. lot of our sex lately has been like spanks and blowjobs. And sometimes yeah. we don't even get to penetration and it feels completely perfect. Like, so then you so are complete. saying that it's not necessarily PIV. Though. But it's P-I-M. Like there's yeah, lots of or P-I-G. Still penetration. <laughs> yeah. So I feel like penetration still counts. And yeah, like I still get yeah. finger fucked, you know, yeah, even if we're not yeah, like. Yeah, that's definitely sex so, in my Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah. We'll talk about um, like, that was great sex, you know, like. Yeah, whatever, for so. sure. I like your definition or what you said about like energetically. I think you just know. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> what makes you an excellent lover and or what are your best qualities as a lover? I, I love this question and I. I reached out to one of my partners that like to ask. <gasps> I love and that. <laughs> everyone ask your partners what your best qualities. I love that. I did. And I got, I mean, they were very sweet and were like named. I think it was like you're passionate and energetic and fun. 
and something in the exploratory realm, which I like super do agree with. When I was thinking about myself and yeah. I was like, what do I think that I bring? Yeah. <laughs> I do feel like to say the term, I feel like a very good power bottom. <laughs> like I'm just like very like <gasps> so energetic hot. and like passionate, like, but I'm very subby, but it's not like I... And to, and to each their own, whatever. Yeah. But I'm just like the, the intensity and the passion is like really there. And I'm just like oh, I love that. all there with them. And yeah, I think that's one of my good What qualities. do you think counts as a power bottom? I wonder if I'm a power bottom now. So I, I literally, I Googled it as I was like thinking that because it was like my instinctive like thought, but I was like, didn't really want to like co-opt it because I know it is from like particularly the gay male community that I, you know, first coined the term as far as I'm aware. When I... Googled it. It just said like energetic receiving partner. And I was like, yeah, I, di- I identify with that. <laughs> Damn. I'm I'm also reflecting on some past experiences where I'm like, yeah, because I fucking move. Like I work for yeah. my dominant. Like I get yeah. so excited. I love to be like Tasmanian devil. Um, <laughs> Tasmanian devil. I love that. Yes. So tell us, how do you invite a partner to have sex with you? Like, what are your signals? What do you do? Like, what is the power bottoms guide ah, to inviting them? Okay, well, also, I, I'm not going to say I can't self I I don't know. I don't want to, like... No, you're your own expert on sex here. Sure. And this is, this is a slice in time. And if anyone ever listens to this and tries to, like, pick apart your personal experience, like, that is not the spirit of sex stories. Like, we're speaking in that. this particular slice in this particular moment. I think the way we create a world where, like, taking care of each other is the norm is by just being like, yes, there's space for growth always. <laughs> Thank you. you know? I know. I appreciate that. How do I invite a partner? Well, now, again, like, being in this 12 and four-year relationship Damn. whereas like it's so easy right because it could just be like yeah when you know when you get home like let's use the flogger like <gasps> when you get home like I'm gonna just have my ass in the air and like just take me you know like or I'm gonna be like laying naked on the bed with a mask uh, on and see, just like come in you know <laughs> these these are the things where I'm like oh, maybe I should get in a relationship that, <laughs> that could be okay that could be good okay maybe I won't just get summoned <gasps> you know it doesn't have to be a long-term relationship you could, I could still be like you know a hookup partner or something you feel true. safe with hmm. you know like that's really it I mean you just I don't know feel someone safe, I'm not right? gonna let anyone come home to me that's it no you wouldn't <laughs> leave your door unlocked like <gasps> that's that's one of my it's really Actually, maybe there's a partner that I would give my lockbox code to and really would love to get woken up by in the middle of the night. That would be fucking hot. Damn. Middle of the night things, I have like a hard no based really? on like past trauma. Okay. I just have a lot of desire and lots oh, of people who have yeah. teased me about it. Okay. Okay. Oh, no, no, no. Don't. Oh, gosh. I hope no one ever teases you about that. Have all the desire. And I know a lot of people do like enjoy that kink just like me personally. I'm like, yeah, yeah. No, that's one of my like boundaries that that's I good. have to like share with partners that like, do not wake me up <laughs> to yeah. like a thing. Yeah, no, no, no. But the fantasy of just being like, I'm blindfolded or I don't, you know, I don't know who you are. And you're just like coming in and like just taking me. That's really hot to me. I love that. So you can literally just like send a text or plant the seed. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, with like new people, there, you know, that's a lot more like vibey, you know. Yeah. Like, okay. What about at like a club or a party? You're like, you just like feel into it? So at the clubs, I've only, I've done like partnered, just like only we're playing together kind of scenarios. Do you mean just like even at a bar, like just anybody? Anyway, yeah. Wherever you pick people, <laughs> yeah. Tell us your wisdom about picking people. <laughs> I think I'm really bad with that, honestly. I was thinking about it again before coming on and I was like I feel like I haven't taken many people just like home that I like haven't known you know what I mean like I tend to like fuck oh, friends yeah. I and was like intimate 27 before I picked someone up at a party and I remember driving home and he was driving separate and I was like oh my god like it was right before ah. I left for South America <laughs> and I was like I'm doing it I'm a grown up you know and then totally. I go here and I was like what am I doing oh my god that's so cute yes and I know it's not completely true I'm like you know just you know, on yeah, vacation yeah. you hook up like blah 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 these things just fall into place and are beautiful but I feel very awkward honestly like really I don't don't know if I have any moves have you been in a situation with a dominant partner where they like point you that's one of my fantasies like at a party like that's like across the room or just or just or just like yeah or they bring someone over (laughs) yeah sick no I like that I, not that I can think of okay. in that scenario, which would also be really hot because it just, like, takes all that off, you know? Yeah. And, and, like, it's hard, obviously, for people to know, like, consent to that, like, you hear now, that they're going to know that you are going to love it. But when you love it, you, never you really love it. I am reading a book right now, and I might get to interview this author. It's 
mm. complex, but it basically discusses the idea of consent where in, in terms of like giving affirmative, positive, normative consent, it's kind of a big ask for us to know every single thing about ourselves. And a lot of what we do with partners, especially when we're exploring our own boundaries and our own pleasure, might create experiences of overwhelm that we're actually seeking out on some level. Oh, and yeah. so it's a matter of like kind of, she's introducing this term limit consent. And so I'm only part way through the book, but I'm like, these are concepts I'm very interested in. But in a perfect world, if someone was like, you're into my submissive, submissive, yes, go. Would that be fun for you at a sex party? Knowing that I'm submissive? If you're the submissive in the situation oh, and, and your dominant like, yeah, is come, like, come use my along. toy, that's um, what I want. Yeah, I think I would be very open to it. Obviously, it would like depend on like the chemistry and who, yeah. what, what, if I was like attracted. But there was one experience like just talking about that like consent situation. Like, what? So my partner and I were at a sex club, a swingers club, and we did make it clear to the people around us like that we're like coming in or like fucking next to us and all that jazz. Like, um, they're like, oh, just you know, you know, like we're playing just together, so on and so forth. And I did have this like one scenario. <laughs> This man who was, like, fucking this beautiful woman next to me and we were having, like, a really great time did, like, put my foot in his mouth. Oh. And I know that was a boundary crossing and not, like, cool at all, but it was really hot. Yes. <laughs> that's, really that is, that's the point of this and book, then, too. That's what I mean. It's and like it's like, oh, moments. you know, like, that's cringe and no one should ever fucking do that, period. But I'm, like, I, I'm telling you in my experience, I was like, God, but that was really hot. Yeah. Yeah. If he had stopped and asked, what do you think you would have done? I think I would have, you know, checked in with my partner. You yeah. know, that that's the main, like, reason. I, was, I wasn't I was opposed to him right. sticking on my foot necessarily, but we had, like, made the ground rules being that right. we were not going to do that. And so, like, you know, it looks bad on me if I'm allowing it and then yeah. him for doing it. And then it could hurt my partner's feelings. And thankfully it didn't. But, yeah, but there's all these, like, complex feelings around then after, like, oh, but I kind of enjoyed that. And I'm well, like, it's, it's a separate thing, though. The liking is separate from, okay, but my boundary was crossed because totally. I enjoyed the sensation and the scenario. It's so, it, And that's the duality of all totally. of it, too. So it's yeah. like, I relate to that, too. And I, as, as I share more on pod and as I hear other people's experiences, I'm like, oh, my God, has my personal pleasure <laughs> in the past created situations where other people have been harmed or traumatized because my oh, boundaries yeah. are wide? You know, and it's yeah. like, there's yeah, only I, so I much personal responsibility we can eat, you know. We're messy, bumpy humans. Like that's, Messy, bumpy humans. That's though. what we're doing. You know, and so yeah. what we can do is mitigate risk and then, like, take care of each other in the aftermath and, like, figure out what we're going to do better or different next time. Totally. Well, so I guess as a contrast then, can you give an example of a time where you had an explicitly clear yes that led to something really hot? There was actually the scenario in Spain where my friends were shooting for kink.com at the time and they were in yeah in Spain in sieges yeah and, and it was amazing and sieges by the way is like such a cool like gay bear town it was just so fun Damn. and there we just like had this day and it was like this uh, sexual imagery was very charged I mean they had already like finished rapping and they just had the like beautiful place for like a week or so more and so I got to stay there thank you I remember it kind of just turned into this, like, orgy scenario, like, at some point. Like, all just very candidly and casually. But, like, in terms of that affirmative yes at the time, I had never been penetrated with a strap-on before. And this person was, like, so eager and willing to, was like, do you want to? Like, oh let's, yeah, I'm like, let's go. I'm like, hell yeah. So I guess that was my affirmative yes. But like, that was a really like fun experience of like, yeah, getting the question, the getting the yes and having a great time. That is so <laughs> hot. What was yeah, the was orgy really like? I still don't feel like I've been in a proper orgy. I don't even know if you could call it that because it's not like we were all in one room. It wasn't like organized. It wasn't like... But it was an orgy house. It just, yes, everyone was just like fucking everywhere. <laughs> and like... Just like fingers and buttholes and bathtubs and this and that. And it was just it was very silly and very fun. But that's that, that so was a great hot. example. Oh, my like God. Some, like affirmative. Yes. Time. So growing up, did you ever get a useful health and safety conversation from either an adult you trusted or like, what do you remember about sex ed in school or consent? <laughs> What do you remember about sex right? in school? I remember no, like science horrible. classes. Yeah. <laughs> it was horrible. I mean, we went to the same high school. I don't remember anything except abstinence only, STI fear mongering, like, you know, splitting of the sexes. I don't even remember. I mean, I guess they did show like the miracle of birth or something. <laughs> 
I don't even remember them saying like, oh, penis and vagina happens and sperm. Co-. I mean, they probably did. And maybe I was just like, like giggly young yeah, person yeah. or whatever. But that's what I remember of like education, which I would love to change. And at home, never. <laughs> my parents never talked about sex. I do remember at least one conversation like in my dad's Jeep. It was like me and my sister And I remember him distinctly being like, just so you know, like, you know, if you guys, you know, like girls or you're like a lesbian, like, that's totally fine. And I remember being like, oh, that's cool. Or maybe I didn't even know if it was cool. Maybe I was a little embarrassed because I never really thought about, like, sexuality at that time in that way. And I I deeply respect my dad for saying that. But, yeah, in terms of, yeah, sex education, I, yeah, never received. Damn. (laughs) Uh -uh. Yeah. It's incredible that we're even here. Like, the more I, I talk know. to people, the more I'm just like, we're all just bumping around on this planet. Okay, we're doing our best. Yeah. Damn. And to also just be, like, starting sexual experiences so young, like, you know, probably around the time that we met, like, mm. middle school age, and to, like, yeah. have no one give you any, like, guidance. It's so tragic. Yeah. You're like, here's all these feelings you won't understand. Go. Yeah. <laughs> be safe, kids. So, Take us back to your early years. Like, when do you first remember hearing about sex? What do you remember thinking about it, feeling about it? And then, like, where did it go from there? Take us through your highlights. (laughs) So the earliest, like, sexual desire or dream that I remember was actually, and it's so telling, actually, on my later years, was there was one of these, like, Batman movies where I thought it was, like, Alicia Silverstone, but it might have been somebody else. I can't remember, like, tied to the chair or whatever. Oh, yeah. Maybe it was, like, the Riddler situation. I don't know. But anyway, some Batman woman was, like, tied to a chair. And I remember having a dream about it after seeing it where I was, like, tied up. And, like, I was being, like, dropped between, like, doors, like, to other, like, beds and things. And I don't think there was actually even, like, another person. But I remember it feeling really just arousing. And then after that, you know, electrical toothbrushes came into play. Like, all these, like, things that you shouldn't be putting in your pussy, you know? But, like, it, it, you know, it vibrates. It feels good. So you figured out that it felt good Yeah, when you were a kid? Yeah. I mean, I think that was a little bit later okay. with the toothbrush. That might have been more like middle school. The kid, the Batman fantasy, I think I was much younger. It was, like, whenever it came out. I don't remember, like, having a very connected experience with my body for a long time I feel like sexually until probably again mid-20s or something even though I had plenty of sex in between yeah that's such a good point I had sex I loved touches and sensation but it was like separate from me or something yeah it's weird I oh I also remember I had this actually very beautiful vision in my brain where I was having sex with my first boyfriend or first serious boyfriend who you probably remember I didn't know what the pleasure of like an orgasm felt like and I was really afraid of it and I was like this close to like coming and I remember being like stop 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 because I didn't know what was happening you know and yeah I look back on that experience now I remember it being really beautiful like the sun was coming in like the little like feathers for my like duvet were like coming out and I was like whoa what was that you know but like I know I didn't actually climax at that point but That was my, like, earliest experience with, like, climax. Wow. Was it just yeah. that one time? Like, did you figure it out after that? Or was it, like, uh, well, something you... <laughs> I had to figure it out. I figured it out by now. <laughs> yeah. I can't remember my actual, like, first climax experience after that. That kind of rings true as the one, even okay. though knowing my body now, I think... Or maybe I did. Uh, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, maybe it was. Or it was just, like, that edge where... Um, yeah, yeah. It didn't quite get, the, like, pulsing sensations. And then I think it got, like, a little bit more, you know, like, shamey. The older we got, the, like, slut shaming that, like, goes into, like, everything. Yes. Um, I mean, I got called a whore and I'd only kissed one person. And I was trying to figure it out. But, like, that was, That's insane. You know? Actually, I remember being super young. It was probably in elementary school, honestly. And I was, like, wearing a bathing suit, like, walking to my neighbor's house or something. And a bus drove by and somebody, like, yelled tramp like out of a school bus when I was like in elementary school it's like damn so messed up that's messed up I know wow I don't even I can't (laughs) it's 
just so. <sighs> okay, so you were already getting laid in high school. We were having opposite experiences where I was like trying and you, <laughs> <laughs> you were like doing it. What was formative or meaningful in that time for you? Like besides that cool climax moment? <laughs> well, it was a complicated situation. My first like long-term partner was very toxic to say the least and so I grew up and I've had to like try to unlearn this and unpack this with my therapist because I got this experience of this kind of like stalker obsessive like mentality meant love you know in so many ways and they're like oh this is this is how somebody loves me like he would do like anything for me but but really it was just like this super controlling experience in my young self and so I felt very like possessed and control and maybe that you know that subversion of now being like submissive now it's again rewriting that like it's like oh no but now as a sub like I still have I have the power like this is in my control this is a way to experience a feeling that felt very formative and very like sexual to me because those were my first experiences. Yeah. Um, and I mean, we, you know, dated from seventh grade till my junior year of high school. So, damn. but I mean, I'm not to say that it was all like negative, you know, we were just young bodies yeah. exploring and that's okay. That's yeah. What do you remember about formative experiences, giving, receiving like oral hand stuff? Like what, <laughs> what comes through in your brain? <laughs> Oh my God, I just can't stop thinking about this, like, it's so awkward, like being in probably eighth grade at the time, like having these sleepovers or I guess they weren't sleepovers, but like when guys would like come over and like watch a movie, it's so gross to me to think about now. And like being like hand stuff under the blanket, like getting like fingered, I I hate, I hate that word so much. I do. What about finger fucked? Okay, finger fucked, yeah, I can get on board with that. It just like fingering just has this like. Fingering gives me this kind of like creepy, spindly feeling. (laughs) It really does. But but mostly it just like brings me back to this time where it was just so awkward and like it wasn't pleasurable at all. Like, I mean, I didn't know what I was doing, like touching myself. Like, I certainly these fumbling into jeans. People also didn't, but that was one like young takeaway. I forget. Sorry, what the question? Yeah, exactly yeah. Like, was. like, what were your experiences with hand stuff, mouth stuff? Oh, like early, just stuff, giving and stuff, receiving. Like, I think I feel like I had just so much curiosity. I don't know what the fuck was happening, so I felt like I was just waiting to see what was happening most of the time. <laughs> right again, because I think that there is this expectation of of being submissive, honestly, or just like receiving, but also. I don't remember this specifically happening to me, but I think it was just like in the zeitgeist or the the, the vernacular at the time of like guys thinking it's gross to like go down on like girls or Mm. what, you know, like I feel like that kind of was like in the air. So I think I, I know actually I was like very shy about receiving oral for a long time. I mean, honestly, I could still get that way sometimes. Like I'm like, no, let me like pleasure you or yeah, there's still something left over there at some, with, sometimes. With new partners or even, like, with your long-term people? It can be with both, just depending on how I'm feeling. When do you feel like you really started to, like, get the hang of sex? If you have it. <laughs> I feel like you have it. I feel like you have a hang of it. I feel like I... There's I think I know my way around <laughs> sex these days, thankfully. But when did I feel like I was getting the hang of it? God, it's crazy because, like I said, I feel like mid-20s, I was like, yeah, finally, like owning it I was like talking about it I was like asking (laughs) asking guys for like orgasms which by the way I got totally dumped one time for like yeah what what is happening I don't know I I was dating some person who like I we'd been dating for a couple months and like sex was great but I had never orgasmed and I asked this person you know after we had sex one time, I was like, by the way, you know, like, let's like make this happen for me soon or whatever. And he totally like freaked out, like, uh, 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 and then like put on his pants and like ran out the door and then dumped me like a couple days later. <laughs> Damn. Wow. 
Well, that obviously has nothing to do with you, but what a wild experience to be on the receiving end of. It Damn. It was a little, yeah, it was very painful. It was very hurtful. That wouldn't know, hurt my feelings. But it's okay. Have you I... asked for orgasms since? What a... Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. Okay. In that time of my life, I was like, that's ridiculous for this reaction. But you know what? Who knows what else was going on? Well, who knows what else was going on? I don't know. Right. I, I could have been when, when did you get all your sexy friends? Like, was that in college? <laughs> was that after college? Like, what's... Because I feel like that's a what do you strong influence, friends? right? Um, I don't know. Like, your sex-positive queerdo friends. Like, whoever's shooting for kink.com. Like. <laughs> oh, totally. Yeah, no. My co-producer for Failed Films, Anton, was a huge catalyst for that, for involving me in that world and bringing me into that world. And I love and adore him so much. Yeah, I think it did all start to happen around when I moved to San Francisco. So I would have been in my early 20s and I was working for this spa in like downtown San Francisco. This is where I met Antone and you know, he just kind of like invited me into that world. I mean, that was actually the first time I met this woman through him who was like a pretty well-known like lesbian in the queer scene in San Francisco at the time and I finally put a name to my queerness at that point I was like oh I actually I have a crush on this person like I like this I would like to date this person I would like to be around this person a lot so I would like to have sex with her you know what I mean and you know sadly that never happened with that person (laughs) that's fine but yeah it was all around my early 20s in San Francisco of course, San Francisco does that to you. So you figured out you were queer. Mm-hmm. Did that, like, affect your sense of identity? Did it cause you to seek out any particular sexual experiences? Or was it just like, oh? I'm not sure if this will answer your question exactly, but it was interesting to me because it never really actually felt like something I needed to, like, come out about no, same, even same. necessarily. I just was like, oh, oh. <laughs> like, that makes so much sense. Again, like, yeah this little makeout queen I'm like wait and then oh you know what actually ended up happening or partially what ended up happening was like threesomes started to like come up a lot and like (laughs) come up (laughs) it just came up (laughs) and in those moments like I was like very uninterested in the man in those situations like I just always wanted to pay more attention to the woman and I think that that like you know then it's how I just you know started eating cunts and like loving boobs in my face and (laughs) just like it kind of just happened organically in that way have you always had threesomes with like a penis owner and a pussy owner or have you had different configurations so in my early years it was that I'm trying to think in any other group scenarios, I feel like it tends to work out that way somehow, okay. unless it's like in a bigger group scenario. You, oh, I think. yeah. Tell us about the bigger group scenarios. Well, <laughs> well like for that, like or, quote orgy? unquote orgy, for the instance, Spanish orgy, like <laughs> the Spain orgy. <laughs> and I'm, I'm not even saying that I've had like a million threesomes, and like I've had complicated ones too. Oh, really? And, oh, yeah, yeah. Wait, do you mean like? configuration wise or like emotions wise or all emotions wise oh I see. yeah emotions wise which i think is normal there was not a lot of communication you know boundary conversations before and yeah. like so that I inevitably leads to like so not, some complications so not threesomes with gymnasts i was like complicated oh, complications like that i was like like handstands or like i don't like uh, my brain tries to make i love that i love that that's the connection <laughs> that you made <laughs> I'm trying to think now. I'm like, no, there's been like, have you ever like had sex in one of those like aerial swing. yoga swing things? Yes. Yeah. Love it. Right. It's wonderful. But I, I can imagine that getting. Love that. But yeah. I've only had it where like one of the partners was paying attention. Like the other one was kind of like steering me and I was getting fucked by one. Yeah. And like oh, then my God. boobs were getting touched. But I really want to have that where I'd love to have a threesome or more some with multiple cocks. And I would love to just be, like, filled up, but also be just, like, touched everywhere, you know? Love that scenario. I will share that <laughs> fantasy, fantasy with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So do you want to highlight, like, best worsts of threesomes or just standout moments? Or, like, what is hot about a threesome to you? I mean, I guess, no, you know, I actually hadn't really ever thought about it. But, A, pleasuring women or just being in cunts, I love. I love the, like, smell of cunts. I just love I think they're just beautiful and amazing. Not that that has to be, a, like, again, and often hasn't been in a threesome scenario, but I love that. 
<laughs> and I think it also goes back to that whole like voyeuristic exhibitionist, like having more eyes, I think just like <gasps> on point. and like, I really think that that's probably like one of the main factors there. Yeah. When do you feel like you started to discover your kinky self? I mean, obviously Batman, but like when, <laughs> when did you like really start to be like, wait, there's a thing here. I was 27 turning 28. Like 27. It was, yeah. Well, well, I'll share mine, but what was yours? If you don't mine was literally when I came back from South America. Cause I was like, I want to try things. I want to, you know, and I, I was just like, I want to get tied up and that's, yeah. and then I just met my former Dom on right. the internet. Like he was like the next person I met on the internet. Well, uh, right after I had that. Yeah, and, that, and it worked out. You know, for <laughs> like, a while. Yeah, he was a great growth partner for a while totally. until until it wasn't. Until it and, wasn't. You know, that's, yeah, yeah, that's fine. So it goes. Gosh, yeah, it does feel like something that's been like tale as old as time for me. But mm. I don't think in practice. I think like spanking, even like choking, and all that was kind of like normalized, like in my sexual history, like from a pretty early age and I always like enjoyed that thankfully yeah. nobody do that without consent right. I've heard a lot of stories where people are just spitting in people's mouths without like talking about it Same. And some people really like that but some people don't so yeah. you know what people better to get the background I think more people don't like unconsensual spit just based on what I've talked to right I don't know if only have a like couple handfuls of data points but you know <laughs> just a couple handful. yeah yeah <laughs> But, oh, you know what it was with ropes was because I started dating a rock climber and I was like really turned on. That is so hot. Honestly, yeah, really strong hands. Like not like this like super like jacked body, but like a very like just beautiful, like hairy body. (laughs) And because he knew all these like ties, you know, like, well, we got to. We got to play with those. Oh, my god! And, that, you know, if we're looking at rope play specifically, like impact play and all that, I think was just like around. Okay. Yeah. When did it click for you? Like, oh, this is kinky. That's what I was going to ask you. Like, what do you define kinky? I mean, I called myself kinky because I am. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> okay. I called myself kinky. Do you remember playing like name games in elementary school when they're like, you know, use the same letter as your name to describe yourself? Oh I my God. literally remember being Stop. in fifth grade and being like, Kinky Karen. That's the cutest <laughs> thing I thought, ever. I knew Kinky just meant you have a crooked and you're strange. Oh, oh my God. That's so cute. I wish that I hope your parents or your teacher, I guess it'd be weird if your teacher kept it, but like say if it, you like wrote it in and it like just existed because that would be such a beautiful thing to just like have on your walls. Right no, now. it was in a circle. I think it was at Girl Scouts. And I definitely remember getting a strange response from the adult and I was offered a different word. Like it was, <laughs> it was like, that is what I, so when did I actually understand oh what God. kinky was? I think I was 27. Like I didn't really get it. Like I knew about being tied up. I really didn't know a whole lot. Like I just didn't know. Did you ever do, like, the Tumblr porn thing? No, I didn't know. Okay. To be fair, I also, like, grew up around porn. <laughs> that sounds weird, but I did. I mean, you know, my dad yeah. would have, like, Playboys on the back of the toilet when we'd, like, go stay with my dad or whatever. And, you know, that actually, you know, ended up leading to my... I make a lot of collage art with vintage Playboys <laughs> now, which... You know, I think that, like, just, like, sex, sexuality, there, I mean, there was, it's not like there was a bunch of, like, BDSM and Playboy or anything like that, but I remember he had, like, the Playboy channel, too, like, on TV and being like, oh, my God, like, watch this. And I think that, like, introed some things, then, like, internet culture, like, young internet culture. Do you remember E-Bombs World? Did you ever know that? That was, like, a young us, like, I don't time know. period. They had some weird... and. I'm not, I'm not kink shaming. Just some, like, oh, yeah. weird, like, cartoon, kinky, like, things that I would watch, like, really young. And, yeah, then, like, Tumblr and just, it just kept evolving. Wow. I also, like, collaged in high school with fashion magazines. My mom, like, subscribed me to, like, a ton of fashion magazines. And there was this one that I, oh, I wish I could remember the photographer. And I believe it was, it was either that woman Gemma or it was like Kate Moss or it was one of those like really big models at the time and there was this I guess photography spread where it was almost like this mental 
institution where one of the models was like super tied <gasps> up, like tied to the bed, and there was this like dummy like nurse oh kind of God. over and it was really high fashion and I just found that the, like the hottest thing ever and I kept that magazine for a really long time Damn. I definitely have a straight jacket fantasy I'm sick I'm just Do like it. I'll hug myself <laughs> Do damn okay yeah, so I'll find that spread for you after. <laughs> I would love to see that yeah that's I mean that's the type of stuff I find very arousing and inspiring to create yeah. from what about, okay, so in your adult life now, like, what are you into the most? Like, what are your turn-ons? What are your turn-offs? Like, what have you been enjoying most lately? You know, it ebbs and flows, I think, when I, like, get into, like, one certain fantasy scenario and, like, just jerk off to it a thousand times. And, you know, maybe it'll, like, <laughs> switch up a bit. I practice a lot of these, again, like, kind of coming into consensual ravishment sort of like fantasy things like in your brain I have a lot of like fantasies where I'm like I'm walking through the woods and then like even like a creature of yeah. some sort like mm -hmm. comes up behind me and like throws me to the ground and rips off my clothes and this like huge cock just like enters and I'm like ah but it's like so super hot that's a big fantasy I have a big double penetration fantasy right now because I've never experienced that outside of, like, toys. So that's a big one. Hot. Wait, is that something you could do with your partners ever? Or, like, that's not a... Oh, with my two yeah. specifically together? Probably not at this point, but it's not off the table with a partner. I don't know Cut. specifically between the two of them. I don't think so. I love it. Okay, so you would want to have a threesome with two penis owners. I would, absolutely. Yeah. Maybe a moresome to keep it balanced. More so <laughs> all the people just <laughs> bring it. More some the merrier. Bring it. Bring I'm it like I'm meeting a few different lady friends right now who like share my double penetration and or two cocks threesome fantasy i'm like maybe we should make this into a party if i find two willing <laughs> i know yeah i'm close up. i'm really close we'll see we'll see yeah i don't know for sure as you've been developing or getting to know your submissive identity like what is she like you know it sounds like there are pleasing aspects it sounds like she's active and powerful like what gets you off the most about that role? And it could be physical sensations, scenarios, or just, like, all of it. <laughs> yeah, I would say that, like I said, I have this power bottom, like, thought, this, like, really just, like, intensity in terms of that. But I also really like this, like, maybe brat, bratty aspect. Like, I'm, I'm, I want to be told I've been really bad and I'm going to be punished. Really? Just, like, get, like, fucked. Do you do bad things to get told you're bad? Because I'm trying to figure out bratting. I'm too good. And that's I have what, a that's what I'm it's weird okay. because I don't I actually feel very similar then really? in that way because like I don't do a lot of bratty things like I'm not gonna like spit. it's more like a fantasy bratty like oh like I just like went out and like you know fucked somebody else and now I'm gonna get like punished or whatever like oh I love that okay. something like in, in this brain of like punishment scenarios I like to be told I'm bad and then good I Love that. I'm learning how to tease one of my play friends right now with like being naughty, but I also like it's so it's hard like for me to for even like <laughs> think about sending a text message that says oops, which would imply that I didn't ask permission and I just came and had a fantasy and I haven't done that yet. But like mm. that has been set up and invited for me. And I like, like but three I or four times I've like gone to write it, it and then I'm like, <laughs> what about it, you think? Like, it feels mean to me because mm. I'm like, well, he didn't do anything wrong. Mm -hmm. Like, and it's literally just so he can make me more and harder. Yeah. And, it's and like I think mutual, he needs it like... to get as many bruises as I actually want or like as many mm -hmm. hairbrush, you know. And and so I just got a big punishment because I did I did my accident. I'm, I'm better at being like, well, I was trying to be good, but I don't know if this counts. Like I've been bad on a technicality like three times. <laughs> Okay. And, and I really had to deliver in this, like, well, I don't know. And he's like, oh, you don't know. You know, and so got it. I'll write. And I don't know if it's because I grew up with military parents. I don't know if it's the farm thing. I don't know if it's just the good girl thing. But, like, mm. I want to play in this way. And it just feels mean to be naughty. <laughs> mean to be naughty. Well, like, yeah, I guess you just have to, like, think about it in <laughs> that it's mutual pleasure and consensual it's not mean it's like the outcome is what you both want right but, but do you trick your but brain. do you do on purpose naughty things like or what so, do you guys have rules of see, I, I feel like in the way that correct me if i'm wrong but i feel like you're setting up like 
the fantasy, the play situation. What do you call that? Like, it's like a, the scene. Sorry, the scene yeah, is what the I'm like scene, looking for, I think. Parameters, whatever container we're playing you, in. Maybe that's not exactly what know. you're saying, but maybe that's just how I'm interpreting it. Our play scenarios change so much. Really? Um, yes, a lot. Like... I'm like, I don't want to feed into this, like, this, like, stepbrother situation that's, like, so on porn, like, so, like, it runs the gambit, like, do I feel bad about being naughty? No. Wait, but do you do can't just, like, just barely say over stepbrother. Things? I mean, it's not, it's like, well, okay, we've had fantasies, I'm speaking specifically with one of my partners, where we were, like, sleeping in like big t-shirts mm-hmm. and we like ended up having sex in the more oh, and sleeping like on these like couches that were like pushed together and we were like having this like fantasy where like oh our like parents or like somebody is like in the other room and we have to be like be really quiet and it's like this it's like a sleepover like turned like sexual and yeah. like things like that wasn't specifically step <laughs> brother specific, <laughs> but it had that air of just this kind of like innocent, yeah. like have to be quiet or don't wake up the parents, like yeah. kind of thing. Totally. I mean, I, I, really I feel that well. way. Like I grew up with, you know, friends that weren't related, but it was that kind of like kids versus grownups got to be sneaky sort of feeling. And it's mm. like, I mean, that's erotic. I don't know. It is erotic. Yeah. Again, it's like, it's the forbidden thing. It's why we we i and many others like playing outside or like mm. you know i love being outside right do you like outdoor sex yeah definitely definitely where have you done it parks <laughs> camp wherever like hiking scenarios gosh on my old college campus like in <laughs> bathrooms although i do have a bit of a like guilty comp like i don't want to inconvenience anybody so in totally. bathrooms i have a little bit of a hard time because i'm like what if somebody needs to come in and like pee? oh like a single person use bathroom yeah uh, got you know, it. we're like holding it up or we're gonna make the manager mad you know but like in terms of being out in the great outdoors super hot i don't think i ever realized how much we share good girl proclivities like I yeah, always yeah. thought of you as like a wild bat, like doesn't give it, like it's fine, no, you know, and that's no. interesting. It's, yeah, no, ask any of my like close friends. They're like, I am the goody two shoes of the group. Wild. For sure. Wait, so do you like being called a good girl, but you like being punished? Is it both? No, you know, I think I like being called like you've been bad because like I'm always feel like I have to be so good you know that's like kind of I think how that manifests how how do you respond like what's your submissive self like when she's getting like punishments or whatever like I get really giggly and crazy I'm like no like like, and and I'm like Uh, crazy so someone really has to actually overpower me because I get mm. so squiggly or I have to get tied down Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think I get just very like approving I'm like just like a yes daddy thank you daddy like (gasps) sort of attitude which proves to be very well received (laughs) are you submissive with both your partners more so one than the other just in terms of like our just like sex lives and their interests I don't think what implements do you enjoy being used on you so we've heard that you got you like a little rope you like some impact play like what Kind. Yes, 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 yes. I have a flogger that I love. I have a paddle that I just recently got. And Jesus fucking Christ, it fucking hurts. So I don't play with that one as often. I have a beautiful glass butt plug that I love. My Hitachi, obviously. Like, that's just all the time. Rope, certainly. Handcuffs, I guess. But those are very painful. I'd rather use ropes mm. than handcuffs. You mean like metal handcuffs or like the yeah, leather like cuffs? Oh, damn. Ones. Those are intense. Yeah. Yeah, they're too intense. I'm like, mm, it's not yeah, really yeah. good. It's um, a real torture. Totally. Have used nipple clamps, but they're not in like the super repertoire. Okay. I think those are my like staples. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So, how and when did failed films come into your life? And like, has it affected your kinky self? Or like, is there crossfire between like failed films and your personal life? Like, what is it like? And what's it been like? And tell us more about what it is for those of us who don't know. Oh, for sure. Okay, yeah. Failed Films is like a very inclusive, queer, art erotic, like film and arts festival. It started in 2016 by two of my good friends and sex workers at the time who were just feeling like they were utter fucking failures. And that this is like their words, so don't give me, you know, not their words, not mine. And they really just wanted to create a space 
for people like them, people that like didn't get highlighted. I mean, they were working in the porn industry and like a lot of the like art that, you know, these workers and just community members like wanted to share was just like not allowed, you know, like, gosh, we talk about censorship, yeah. like everywhere, you know, these like white walled galleries were not like, you know, going to share some of these really smutty, artful tasteful and sometimes not just like personal pieces and so they created this really magical space I went to the first one and so yeah this is how it kind of came into my life so Antone again who's my co-producer had a film in the first one and we were like really good friends at the time even closer now you know but it just like lit this like light bulb in my head when he was like oh it's this like kind of porn like erotic event and I one of my films is going to be in it and I was like uh holy shit like I need to go to there <laughs> like again like I was like I'm not I'm not going to miss that like it, it, it was drawing in my you know alternative side I guess and I went that first year and I was like this is the most incredible thing I've mm. ever seen they had and we still kind of do similar setups but you know they had this like main event screen and it was like this very DIY space in Oakland where you could like crawl up these ladders to all these like old televisions and put on like headphones and watch people Antone again specifically like jerking off with egg yolk (laughs) and like it was yeah it was just a magical experience and it ended up being that they did two years in Oakland and I think they just needed some extra support you know the founders just were ready to like hand it over or like take a little bit of a step back but they did stay involved and Antone expressed like a interest in being like I would love to bring it to LA and He asked me to, you know, co-produce and we've been doing it ever since. So, yeah. So it's like an experiential offering, too. It's not just films. Like the one in 2019 that I was at had like beautiful sets, like the rooms are decorated beautifully. Mm -hmm. And it's like a kind of curated experience for people. It totally is. I'd say like a film festival or like even an art festival, like it doesn't quite do it justice. It's like certainly its own unique experience. Yes, we do make it very interactive. We basically take all the films that are submitted and, you know, select or deny as, you know, we do and kind of section it off into these like different installations. I mean, we do have a main feature screen where we typically break it out into like 30 minute segments of shorts that we want to feature on the large screen, but we segment the other films like off into kind of these like sexy categories, obviously, right? So we had like blood play room, for instance, in this kind of dungeon setting. We had like a splashing room like last time where, you know, where all those like films went. We actually, we get a lot of very like culty, like witchy, sexy films. That was like an installation one year. We also tend to love having like a very, like a safe, like play space like area to just like cuddle decompress do what you're gonna do (laughs) we've had glory hole installations and we also have you know performance art drag shows I think we are actually gonna have like a performance art like poetry dance situation this year which I'm excited about so really there's like there's a lot to experience is a DJ bar like all the kind of like typical event places but I think one of the most like beautiful parts about it is just like the community that it brings that comes together. Like I think sometimes in sexually charged places, you you have to be very careful in some ways like with what to expect and people's etiquette and whatnot. And like I would never even compare the community to those types of people that bring those like negative. Like the community that has been involved in failed films is always phenomenal Mm. like and I am just so absolutely honored and my mind is blown every year that I get to do it I'm like ah I get to like show porn (laughs) in Los Angeles and like just like support all these like fun like kinky pervy lovely beautiful humans and it's just it's so magical I'm yeah I'm very honored okay if listeners want to like participate by either attending or like submitting a film what do they do 
Please. Yeah. And it's not actually not even limited to film. Like I just said, like we're open to performance art installations. But yeah, the main thing, if you have films, we request, it's not totally required that they're like under 10 minutes and you can go to failedfilms.info to go to our website. There is a submit link there where you can submit your films. It's a very simple, easy form with just like some consent questions and, you know, age verification and all that. And if you also just like want to support and you can't make it, or if you can make it, we have our indie Indiegogo site already set up as well. So you can simply just donate money to support us there. That would be amazing. Or we also are offering like discounted tickets right now. If you like buy them pre-sale, there's like a t-shirt ticket combo that you can purchase. And there's also like a bigger sponsorship where we'll actually like put you on the big screen for like a certain amount of money as well. So nice. yeah, that's all at failedfilms.info. And that's where you can sign up for the newsletter too, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. Thank you for mentioning that. Fuck yeah. Um, yeah. So if you just want to like attend or get info or mm-hmm. kind of keep tabs on everything, failedfilms.info. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So fun. Have you watched anything there or like experienced anything there that has inspired your own personal sex life? Ooh, my own personal sex life. It's, I've certainly seen films there that have inspired my art. I'm trying to think anything specific films. God, there's so many amazing ones. They're just like flashing through my brain right now. So there is this one artist that's inspired my films, but there was one where their partner put like a dildo on a motorcycle. <laughs> and they were like riding the motorcycle off, and then the person like got on, if I remember correctly, the like dildo motorcycle. And I was like, that's really, really fucking hot. That's pretty hot. Yeah. It was like in the desert. Riding and riding. Damn. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> that's one one I can think of at least. Oh, and I mostly love that. like they're just so inspiring in so many ways. Like just like the self-expression of sexuality just like really like yeah. means so much to me. So what sex wise have you not yet explored that you want to explore well we share in this fantasy i feel like we've <laughs> not only do we share in the good girl proclivities or whatever but like i when i was reading like your bio or example bio on your email i was like we are so similar and like so <laughs> so many ways I'm like how did we get here was this our like catholic upbringing um hometown no, i like, wasn't even were you not no, why did i always think that no uh just because probably ch- best friend best friend is catholic yeah. yeah 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 exactly but no i just raised okay, it just do we, how do we i up think so we're similar? soul friends <laughs> I know. I th- I, based yeah. on the amount of times that our lives just, just continue to yeah, cross totally. like i think we're soul friends or something oh, i don't oh, know oh. yeah um <laughs> wait sorry what was the question now i'm like what else do you want to explore? Oh, what do I want to explore? Oh, it was, uh, so my, the first thing that came to mind was like this gangbang more scenarios for sure. Yeah, what would your perfect gangbang be like? Like, do you want one of your partners overseeing it? Do you want it to just be tons of strangers? Would you like a woman to oversee you? Like, what feels safe or juicy? Those are all good options. <laughs> great options. Yeah, great, great options. Yeah. I should think about that more because, yeah, in all in my brain, it just it's it's all of the above. It happened, you know. I'll tell you my fantasy, and oh, maybe you'll want to be one of these people. Like, yeah. I sort of have okay because I have a lot of fantasies about daisy chains. Even though I don't have like a cock, I'm like I could wear a strap on and be part of a daisy chain or something. But um, then I'm like, what if I take the daisy chain concept, like the kind of like you know we're all fucking each other, but like yeah. okay, maybe this won't make sense when I say it out loud with words. <laughs> but the, to me, it's like a parallel concept of like. I know a few different, like, whole owners who mm-hmm. want to have a gangbang. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'm going to go to the trouble of, like, arranging this. And mm-hmm. I have cock owners who mm-hmm. are going to be participating. <laughs> How hot would it be if we got, like, a circle of each? And, like, we're just moving around. You know, and people can have strap ons if they want, whatever. Maybe then we switch and we fuck them. I don't know. You know, like. So many. The, the there's a lot opportunities of opportunities are opportunities. endless. <laughs> you know, and then, and then I'm imagining, like, in the center, like, the overseers that are making sure the condoms stay on. That are making, you know. Because for like me, the, the only overseer, way that yeah. I could ever have a gangbang. And I, you know, I might have a play friend who is, like, this level of, like, desire for control and dominance and holding space. Sure. Is, like, having that person who's, like, okay, do that. You know, like, a ringleader. Interesting. So, yeah. No, I never really thought about that but it does sound actually it reminds me of another failed film that was amazing where there was this like chain of women and non-binary people in a circle and then there was this like dom making them like drink 
<laughs> smoothies, like or like these shakes of some sort. And then they're like, okay, ready, bitches, and like just like put your fucking vibe to your clip. Like, come, come. It was like this really amazing. I um, love that film. I also have never masturbated in a group of people, and I would be like down to try that or to do like you know screenings where that's a thing or get away. You know, if the future yeah. retreats that we host, I don't know. I remember it being very erotic, like when I so my first film that I made for failed films, the Empress that you were yeah. in, but like one of the scenes, the last scene actually is like I am remaking the Empress card, but making the like kind of staff like my Hitachi, <laughs> and it's just yes. like was like masturbating with it and it was my friends who were shooting it at the time and I actually I guess maybe they had some shame or whatever I was like so turned on by like I'm like I'm going to come right now that feels like I shouldn't actually come right now like because of like this is a professional setting with a thing it's very complicated oh but my yeah gosh. I guess I have <laughs> masturbated and <laughs> I don't know I think that just means that you're like ready to go when it comes to erotic film <laughs> You could say that. Yeah, you could say that. Mm-hmm. Did I ever tell you about the time that there was, like, a documentary crew in here and I built a fort and masturbated in it? And that's, like, on TV somewhere. Like, What? I know. No. Why did it, that was, like, during the pandemic. They were, like, it was some docu-series. So you have done it then. I've done that. But yeah. they don't, I don't think they show anything because it's, like, TV. It was a... Was it just was noise it that they were trying to record or what? No, there was cameras in here, but, like, I don't think they were focused on my... Like, I put in a butt plug, but they can only show so much on TV, so they, like, kind of shot around the it. idea to... I've never gone to watch it. <laughs> it, it it's, a, it's some series called Sex Life on... I think it was, like, on Epics or something, so you can get it on Amazon or something. But I never went and watched my episode because I was, like, too cringe about all of it, so... It's hard. We'll see if I even listen to this. <laughs> I get so embarrassed. So we'll see. I, I know the feeling. Yeah. Do you think you'd ever do more, like, erotic stuff? Or, like, what's your relationship? I mean, it sounds like film getting or... film turns you on. Yeah, it does. I have many fantasies of, like, film. There's one pornographer that I actually really adore. And, like, I'm really inspired by... They go by Vex Tape, I believe. And the type of films that she is making, I want to be making myself and like I I pull some inspiration from her films into my own films I think I'm a little shy and also finding willing participants who want to be on film is (laughs) thank you it's my next year it's my next year I'm going into an era of what will probably be like educational bucket list porn like crossing mm-hmm. stuff off, you know, I want to document it. That's the next step for cool. me. And especially since the internet and the world is like, mm, looks like you're a whore. I'm like, well, I will go all the way then. That's so frustrating. Just like, like I mean, my and also, yeah, yeah. Years. yeah. Hell yeah, yeah. Okay. But yeah, I want to, there's like something along that, like, yeah, finding like participants and like, you know, navigating like my partner's comfortabilities too. Like, if it, mm. if it were up to me, I think I might be quite a bit more slutty than I, I <laughs> like, see what you're currently am. And then I, you know, I have my own hand. There's many things, but I foresee my art and nudity and in this space evolving and sticking that. around. Yeah. Mm. What would you say are your hopes for your sexual future going forward? I hope to smash the shame, smash the stigma, I'd, you know, love some more feminine energy in my sex life. That's one piece that I feel like is missing in evolution. I mean, I just want to, like, commune. (laughs) I just want a full, beautiful commune of people, like, having babies and taking care of each other and having sex and just building houses and making art. And, yeah, that's the dream. I fucking love that. Mm Mm-hmm. And if you could go back in time and give younger you a piece of sex advice, what age or ages would you pick and what would you say? Yeah, I think I'd want to tell my, you know, maybe 12-year-old self that they have an active role in their sexuality and don't let anybody tell them otherwise. Mm. (laughs) Fuck yeah. Yeah. To bring it full circle, what do you remember about our threesome? Because I feel like I maybe blacked out. I'm sure I have details in my journal, but I also just remember it being so hard. Hot, but oh, I don't, it was super hot. Do you, what do you remember about it? Well, first of all, it was like super hot and also the most like well, I guess I don't know if manicured is the right word, but like you guys had your like STI panels like on the table. You, we like talked about consent and, you know, I had already, I can't remember if you introed us like text wise or something before to just like maybe do this, but you were also like 
oh, if you want to like do the hot tub first, which I can't remember if we did before or after. I think we did after. It ended up doing it after. And it just felt so like safe and inviting. And I didn't feel like I needed to, yeah, do anything I didn't want to. I was like just going to be very turned on by you always. And so I just remember you and your play partner at the time, you know, were doing like penetrative sex. I was uh, like hands-on oral and touching participant on your end. I really didn't interact much with, as I already admittedly like said. Yeah. Yeah. And then you were like tied up or like chained, I believe around your neck and like drug out, you know, quote unquote to like the couch. And he made me be the one who could tell you when you could come. That's right. And That's so hot. was super hot. But again, being kind of the people pleaser, I was like, oh, I don't feel like I should like let her come so soon. <laughs> and like I had to like really challenge myself to just like, you know, take it a little bit further. That's um, so true. That is such a gift for me when someone tells me no. Like okay. I need to train my current partner to like all the time when I ask. And I get it. I love getting permission, but I'm like, I need some no's. Sure. I guess I got a no when it was the same. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So that's, yeah. yeah no. It was super hot. <laughs> um, yeah. And then we just all like decompressed together in the hot tub and it was just a beautiful night. I remember being very much on like cloud nine, like, yeah. yes, I just, you know, checked off one of these like amazing little sexual experiences that I really loved. Damn. Lauren, thank you so much for being a guest on Sex Stories. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. I've been loving it. Thank you for doing this in the first place. This is amazing I love work. It. I love it. I'm so glad to have you. Lovers, that's our show. Share a sex story or apply to be a guest at sexstoriespodcast.com. Hear the things I won't say on pod and get to know me through my most personal updates while supporting the show by joining our sweet community of lovers at patreon.com slash yod. There, you can also view my beautiful artistic nudes, record a patron-only episode with me, ask me anything, including questions about your sextrology, watch hours of bonus content, and join the growing community Discord, all for the monthly price of a fancy city coffee. Sign up now at patreon.com slash You can find the link in the description below. And if you want to engage with me erotically, you can invite me to play by turning me on via my money kink through OnlyFans or Sext Panther. Also, if anyone out there is on Feet Finder or All Things Worn as either a buyer or seller, let me know. I'm very curious to talk to you on or off pod, especially if on pod. For all my links, visit yole.com slash links. I'm also on FetLife, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, and Reddit at yole, and I love receiving nice, kind human messages and comments as I figure out what I want to post where. If you're too shy for the pod but you still want my undivided attention, good news, you can work with me privately. See details of my offerings and collaboration invitations at yole.com slash create. Subscribe to Sex Stories and YouTube at youtube.com slash sexstoriespod. I am catching up on comments, and if you're watching on YouTube, please know that there are never links in the description because that has gotten us nearly taken down way too many times to count, including the podcast's very own URL. Find my sexy question list to ask your partner, share a story, or ask a question that you would like me to answer on pod at sexstoriespodcast.com. And be a lover who makes the world a sexier, more loving place by leaving five stars and a helpful review wherever you get your podcasts. Sex Stories is produced from start to finish by me, Wyo Lee, and is edited by Kimberly Loftus. You can find us collecting sex stories at Echo Park Lake a couple Sundays every month. Subscribe to my newsletter at yole.com for weekly details. Thank you for spreading ripples of love with me so that we may all lead better laid lives. Thank you for sharing your lives and stories with me. Thank you for listening. And of course, remember to share sex stories.